Critter Junction has their eye on reducing cold start latency, and that's going to take a bit of detective work. Stay tuned to see how they profile startup times to speed things up. Critter Junction's been seeing longer than wanted startup times for their compute engine instances, even though they said everything according to our auto scaling recommendations. They know they were running into some logic on their game servers on Compute Engine, like taking user inputs to spawn them into a new Critters Island. But after profiling their startup times, they were seeing more than 380 second cold start times, while the response latency for a request was in the 300 millisecond range. They also did a performance test to see how long Compute Engine was taking to create those instances, versus how much time their code was taking to run. This showed request, provision, and boot time straight from the cloud shell. Request is the time between asking for a VM and getting a response back from the Create Instance API, acknowledging that you've asked for it. You can profile this by timing how long it takes Google Cloud to respond to the insert instance rest command. Provision is the time that Compute Engine takes to find space for the VM on its architecture. Use the Get Instance API on a regular basis and wait for the status flag to change from provisioning to running. And boot time is when startup scripts and other custom code executes up to the point when the instance is available. Just repeatedly pull a health check that is served by the same runtime as your app. Then time the change between receiving 500, 400, and 200 status codes. After doing these, Critter Junction noticed the majority of instance startup time usually happened during the boot phase, when the instance executes startup scripts. This is not uncommon, so you should profile your boot scripts to see which phases are creating performance bottlenecks. To get a sense of what stages of your script are taking the most boot time, one trick is to wrap each section of your startup script with the seconds command then append the time elapsed for each stage to a file and set up a new endpoint to serve that file when requested. This let Critter Junction dig even deeper to pull the endpoint and get data back without too much heavy lifting or any modification to their service. And there it is! The performance bottlenecks seem to be public images, pre-configured combinations of the OS and bootloaders. These images are great when you want to get up and running, but as you start building production-level systems, the large portion of boot-up time is no longer booting the OS, but the user-executed startup sequence that grabs packages and binaries and initializes them. Critter Junction was able to address this by creating custom images for their instances, which you can do from source disks, images, snapshots, or images stored in cloud storage. Then use those images to create VM instances. When the target instance is booted, the image information is copied right to the hard drive. This is great when you've created and modified a root persistent disk to a certain state and want to save that state to reuse it with new instances, and when your setup includes installing and compiling big libraries or pieces of software. When you're trying to scale to millions of requests per second being serviced by thousands of instances, a small change in boot time can make a really big difference in costs, response time, and most importantly, the perception of performance by your users. Stay tuned for what's next for Critter Junction. And remember, always be architecting. <laughs>